from the secret files of Teletram 2. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is the long, 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 long awaited return of Teletran 2. Yes, of course, we thought it was over. We thought those days were behind us, but IDW reminded us sometimes they are shite for scheduling. Sometimes. <laughs> True. Come on. Um, as of recording this, I think another issue is supposed to be out, due out today, and I don't think it came out. Oh, really? I think. Hmm. Because, you know, I think the, the issue we're doing today, issue 15 for Transformers, was supposed to be out, like, mid-December? Oh, no, yeah, that's definitely the case, because yeah. that's why we didn't do any last month, because I was like, Mikey, are we doing one this month? And you were like, I, I did not put no comics out, Andy. We, we could do Galaxies, but that would be really weird in its own. It would be. Hmm. Um, but before we continue, as we yeah. do our usual rants of introductions, and this is Andy, you know it's him, uh, I would like to hijack this show. Oh, wow. Hijack it. Uh, because uh, a young man, a beardy man, a man with a chin that he had come apparently spot in the very genes, Andy, mm. has laid eggs. And those eggs have hatched into some sort of thing. Uh, thing of some sort. Uh, we've named the child. For, mm-hmm. the, for those of you who don't know, Gruff had a child. Adam yes. Nichol had a child. And we're saying congratulations there on the show because he is a longtime friend and compatriot and an asshole. Um, uh, he can name the child anything he wants. Andy, what will we be calling the child? Jozza. It's wee little child. tiny Jozza. Wee little tiny Jozza. Oh, uh, mate, it's fucking Jozza. Here he comes, lads. He's going to bitch slap you. Fucking Jozza. Lads, lads, lads. The first gift we are giving him, I think we'll come into it together, like for his first birthday, is a tiny cane. Oh, and, I, and maybe a pin pat. I suggested a tiny fake goatee for it, the child. You know, so you know, it looks like his father. He's got to develop <laughs> his ensemble look as he gets older, you know. But I, I I feel that a child birthed from Gruff needs the goatee like ASAP. Yeah, but I also wanted to have a jacket that's super sparkly. <laughs> like a rhinestone koi, but a cowboy. Yeah, do, yeah do. And, and he needs theme music, but we can provide that. <laughs> yeah, rock and roll. We, I just want to go to school, but they keep doing this to me. <laughs> Are you sure they're, the, they're friends of your father? I, I don't know. He told me to call them Uncle Mikey and Uncle Andy, and I just called them pain. <laughs> <laughs> but we wish Adam and Abby the best of luck with the complete cessation of their marital life. Because life ends now. There is no future. There is only nappies. Mm, yeah. No, no, you know. Basically, just sell everything you love. I mean, you know this better than me because you've you've got well, you don't have a child, but you 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 are related to a child currently. Yes, I have seen I have seen what they do, and I have seen like it's like watching you know um in the Ark of the Covenant where they open it. Oh yes, it's kind of like Mm -hmm. watching that in slow motion. Oh no, Mm. just like should I should I left those particular doors closed, ladies? Mm. Mm. Anyhow, with that classy reference to. The birth of a human being. Yeah. Um, we are going to go into Transformers this week. We are doing issue fifteen and of the main book, and we're doing uh, issue three of Galaxies. Um, and for the Patreon show, we are doing the complete mini series of Transformers Ghostbusters, which must be what the excluding Rom versus Transformers because that was all the Hasbro universe. Um, didn't that be the third or the fourth one of these? Uh, you mean crossovers? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, just kind of standalone titles. Yeah, I would say so. Hmm. We've getting a few of them. Because uh, I'm including, like, Marath Attack versus Transformers in that. But it's weird, because I'd almost say ROM versus Transformers you can't include into that category because it it happened in continuity. Hmm. Um, and, and uh, y- you know, it had repercussions in a major storyline and stuff like that. Whereas, I, I mean... This oddly, we'll get into it, but this oddly could have major repercussions, but it's unlikely to have them for Transformers. Yeah, it it might have them just for like a sequel comic series, but mm. it won't, you know, it's not going to take place within the context of the universe of yeah. Transformers currently. Mm. But that is for the Patreon, and if you want to hear our opinions on that, you will have to, you know, cough up Le Do, um, <laughs> as we say in La France. Yep. Uh, but first, we are going to go to Transformers issue 15, The Change in Your Nature, part 3, written by Brian Lucky. Re- Ru- Brian Lucky? Oh, oh no. Jesus. Brian oh, no. Ruckley, 
who may be lucky. I don't know. He's going to TF Nation again. He can't be that lucky. Mm -hmm. uh, art by Anna Malkova and Bette McGuire Schmidt. Colors by Joanna LaFerrante and a non a non judger judge uh, Josh Bertram. Uh, letters by Jake M Wood. We are moving into the post Tombi Long era. No oh. uh, moment silence. Uh, edited by David Mariotti and Tom Waltz. And this issue opens with Megatron watching a live feed of Sentinel telling everyone that basically don't trust the Decentacons, them the assholes. Uh, at this time, he's having himself juiced up by Geaxis with Energon. Basically, for the first time ever, he's at full power, or at least the first time in a very, very long time. And they're, he, they're pointing out, like, they're so underpowered these days that having to juice him like this is burning through most of their reserves but megatron is saying no this is happening either this works and everything goes spectacularly or it goes horribly wrong but we're making this choice um we then flash back to megatron going over his his history he was a miner he was a gladiator he was in the war of the threefold spark uh he fought the their enemy ex arkan uh who appeared apparently some sort of trifecta type um and he basically saw the the worst of people and the best of people uh, but in a way, he realized that what Exarchon's reputation, his sheer will, the terror he induced in others, gave him a lot of power. Uh, meanwhile, Bumblebee is reporting into Chromium Orion about what happened with Soundwave murdering a large portion of Cybertron's local bad boys. Um, and they're they're going over the facts that uh, Shockwave's involved, Soundwave is killing people. They know that Frenzy is very likely the one responsible for Brainstorm's murder. And then Orion kind of drops the ball that he knows who killed Rubble, and it was uh, it was Quake, uh, which doesn't go down well with old Bumblebee. Uh, no. And then Orion has to point out that if I told you this sooner, well, this would have happened, except you'd have gotten yourself killed. And uh, it, they come to the conclusion that they need to inform Sentinel of what happened. Uh, Megatron heads out, and we get another flashback about how in the wake of Nam's Edict, a lot of the things that gave his life meaning, the, the mines, the shipyards, the gladiatorial fights, they were all shut down. Peace made people complacent. The, the controls on Energon and expansion made it feel like Cybertronians were no longer developing. Uh, Thermagax shook things up because she drew in the Incenticon. She wanted to go back to the old ways. But um, as far as Megatron's concerned, she really lacked the vision to see her dry, her, her she, did, she lacked the drive to see her vision true all the way. She retreated, and Megatron realized that he needed to become a single, willful, dominant force. All of this is culminating in uh, Megatron going to the Rise base, where Flame War um, nearly gets Barricade killed, basically, because he, he gives her, she or she gives him the uh, wrong room address, and uh, he ends up sharing with Shadow Striker in what must have been a very awkward, oh dear, you're in bed with me moment. Um... She also, like, runs away to the point where I'm liking this flame war. Uh, but this is all about Shockwave. Megatron is here to see him. They go over what's been going on. The rise is out of control. You're not doing what I need you to do. You're not taking the caution I need you to take. Um, and then Megatron asks, who are your two top-ranked individuals? And it turns out to be Slipstream and Sixshot. Megatron calls them in. And then Megatron, being at full power while everyone else in the room isn't, lays into Shockwave and just starts beating him down while ordering Six Shot and Slipstream to watch. Um, in the process, he announces that he is the single driving force of the of the Ascenticons, rather, and of the Rise. The Rise doesn't exist. It is an arm of his. Shockwave is utterly shattered. And he yields to Megatron. And yeah, Slipstream and Six Shot go, give us the orders, mate. Um... Back at Iacon, Orion and Chromia have presented everything to Sentinel, who's, like, looming in a way that really makes me think he's going to do something stupid. Um, <laughs> he's decided that he will alter the anonymous edict so that the security operations can s capture Shockwave and the rest of the Rise. Basically, if you're in law enforcement, you are going to be at full power, uh, at the ex expense of a lot of other things. And while you shouldn't actively try to kill anyone, I care more about you succeeding than anyone else living. Uh, Hound and Novastar are deputized to oversee the manhunt. Chromia and Orion are both rather unhappy with this turn of events. Sentinel literally ignores them and just says that they need to get Ironhide to coordinate things. And one way or the other, this is ending. And the issue ends. Um, so, one thing I will point out straight away, the Lugnut's in this. 
which uh, really? was fun. Yeah, uh, the the Cybertronian uh, Megatron's holding over his head in the gladiatorial fight. Oh, it's it's all luggers. Yeah, oh. I tried to figure out who that was, but I, I, I guess it wasn't looking closely enough. No, like it, I didn't realize it at first until I noticed the feet in the face. Oh uh, yeah, you can see yeah. The, the mouth. Um, which also means he was a big boy. Um, but Andy, this is largely this is sort of a a second go at Spotlight Megatron. Do you remember mm-hmm. that from ye oldie times? Uh, when you um, say ye oldie times, you mean ye oldie times in this continuity or last continuity? Last continuity, back written ah, by Nick okay. Roach. Okay, Nick, Nick Ro- Mike Roach or Nick Roach? Nick Roach. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Roach. Mike Roach, without a cause. Oh man, Nick's distur- disturbing secret identity. Um. That was an issue which was broadly about Megatron re-establishing his control of the Decepticons using violence, using his ability to beat Starscream into a puddle. Uh, Here, um, in a situation where he is all-powerful because he's, you know, this is a do-or-die strategy for him, um, and where, you know, Shockwave is weakened, everyone around him is weakened, uh, he takes advantage of that and dominates do you think this read well? Uh, I thought it was interesting. It's the first time in a while that I've uh, I felt more positive about the the comic as things had there was action. There felt like progression. There was finally some character pushing or more character pushing. So I felt it was a bit more interesting and engaging than a lot of the previous issues. Though mm-hmm. I do feel that the whole thing of them all being underpowered and then they can juice up. Uh, it almost feels like a, a weird Bane from Batman situation. Oh God, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not thinking it now. I am. I'm not. I don't like the idea that they all can. They all can juice up. I suppose it's not necessarily juice up. It's just like they can go to the you know what they would naturally be at. And that and well, for, for to me- individuals like Megatron, what he's naturally at is pretty impressive. I think it depends, like what. In the future, like when the war actually starts, are they all mm. going to be running at a hundred percent then, or is, not? Is it, do you think it's going to be like the the edict's gone and it's simply like society is running as it would have without the edict? Except I'm, I'm there's a war on. I'm almost slightly concerned that there'll be almost a Dragon Ball Z effect in. It's like, mm. oh, I'm not even fighting you at my full power, kind of thing, and then he yeah. just drinks a, a carton of energy on juice <laughs> with a straw. That 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 well, like that box of drugs Roller used to carry around with him, and he just like. Now you get it. Yeah, it's like the Popeye effect. <laughs> like Prime's getting beaten down by Megatron, he cracks the can of spinach energy on and starts uh, wailing back on him. Mm. That I, I, I think that is yeah. a concern because I, I think that's. I mean, it, it's not a terrible idea, but it almost feels like uh, all of Cybertron is is starving, mm. in a weird sense. Um, so it makes Megatron's point of view seem a lot more, a lot stronger as well. Like. Shouldn't hmm. they all be, like, fed effectively? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think I think that is kind of one of the the points of the book that Megatron. Yeah. It's going to be not net, like like previous continuities. It's not like what he's saying is wrong. It's what he eventually does with that. Mm, like, yeah. Going, because you know, previous one was everyone should be equal. And and we all saw how that went. Um, <laughs> Here it's, well, we should all be at our full potential. And that mm. seems to be the kind of driving force for him in this in this series so far. Because everything, whether it's talking about Cybertronian expansion or personal liberties, everything else, you should reach your full potential. And for him, that potential is high. <laughs> mm. um, I I do like this issue, I have to admit. I do think, like, I, I compare it to Spotlight Megatron. I would say it's an inferior version of Spotlight Megatron. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The unrealistic standard, perhaps. But um, I find the idea of what this book is... Because up until now, Megatron has been monumentally ineffective. He's sure been there. Like, basically, he has lost complete control of everyone around him, even Soundwave. And when you lose control of Soundwave... Yeah. Like, you're Megatron. Um, And this is him reestablishing that he can lead. Um... And there's some nice touches in here, like he uses a, a fusion cannon he pulled off the wall to beat Shockwave. Uh, and uh, what is else? it weird uh, that there are a lot of them? Yeah, it's I not like, like a unique thing. 
Yeah, it, well, they, they've always this thing like fusion cannons. Did Megatron just outlaw them for Decepticons unless he? <laughs> presu- they are a technology. Like usually, yeah, yeah. He, he he picks one up. It's not like it was made for him every time. Um, well, like the, the, it, the the toy stuff's always been a bit weird, hasn't it? Because it's well, like oh, it's powered by a black hole, something yeah. something dark side. We'll 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 talk about toy stuff. Oh, um, well, okay. <laughs> I like the intermission stuff uh, here. I like. Uh, Orion and Chromie and Brumblebee, I thought was a good theme, mm-hmm. um, because we've seen Orion kind of as as, as more of a caring figure with, figure with Bumblebee. This is him being the leader. Yeah, so I'm saying like, if I told you, shit would have gone down, and we don't need that right now. And I also would, like it's a really throwaway scene, but just barricade uh, Shadow Striker and Flame War was a gas. I, I just, I really enjoyed that. Just because it was a scene that we'd never had in the book before. See, I, I didn't enjoy it, because mm. if you take it away from the book, you lose nothing. It had no context. The rest, the characters weren't in there uh, anymore at all. Like, if they'd been in the issue a bit more, then fair enough. But, like, literally, you take this page out, and it doesn't affect the story at all. Mm. It seems I, like it, yeah. it was from a different issue, almost. I can see that. It is something I liked, though. I have to admit. Is it because the, the bit of comedy probably, helped break up the story? It is did. That why? It did. It was just this little bit. Because, like, one thing about all the flashbacks is that they are very much similar in tone. This was and a bit of levity, levity before it goes crazy. Mm-hmm. And also, I will say, this issue felt much better paced than previous ones. Yes, agreed. Uh, we've, we've said before, there is a very decompressed feeling to this book. This flowed much more succinctly. Yeah. Um, which is hopefully, you know, Brian. Brian's finally gotten comfortable with the comic format because I think if he kept on this kind of pace, I think we'd have seen a much stronger book up until now. Either that or we're getting into the meat and potatoes of the actual true, story. True, I mean, he's, he said um, we're going to have some Cyclonus focus coming up, so I'm curious to see how that goes. Mm. Um, here's the thing. You, uh, you know, when Shockwave came in and we were got like, oh God, everything's Shockwave's fault again. You mm-hmm. did express a sort of hmm about it. Did I? Mm. I'll take your word for it. It was a while yeah. ago. <laughs> um, how do you feel about like where Shockwave falls in the pecking order in this book? You you mean when he's been bent over a barrel and made to say, "Yamete, Megatron, summer, yeah." I thought it was good. Uh, I, th- I thought it was harsh that Megatron rips off his gun hand, then stomps his normal hand. It's like, <laughs> come on, bro. <laughs> and smushes his little face to nothing. Um, mm. It's good. Like you say, it's a good way to assert your uh, well, your, your physical dominance and leadership uh, over the Decepticons, and especially in front of the other two, who are like, hey, don't fuck with my plan. And they're like, all right, bro. Okay, we got it. Whatever. Mm. You, you're the big man. Uh, I liked it. Um, it definitely seems that Shockwave was playing silly fucker, though. Yeah. Definitely was doing it. So it was good to see him almost get to come up and some, like you say, um, get Megatron to do something a bit more proactive in his organization. Mm. Um, he's been extremely reactive. And yeah. even then, what he's been basically, when I say reactive, he's been yelling a lot. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, this is the first time he's really uh, done uh, anything, I feel. Mm. And it's not necessarily like there's an action scene, and a decent action scene at that. It's the fact that Megatron has taken control of the situation. Yeah. Which he needed to do, because this Megatron is not super, super well-developed. Um, this not yet, him, anyway. No. So this has given him some... We've got some sense of his overall goals, why he has taken this stance. Mm. You know, for him, his entire life changed because of the edicts. Um, every, his way of life. It may have not have been the most pleasant way of life, but he, he, you know, the mine's closed, the fight's closed. They took and their gerbs. They took his gerb. Um, Dirk, Dirk. So I think it's pretty strong. Uh, what do you think of the art? Uh, we are lacking Angel this issue, so. Ah, uh, it's nice. Uh, the action stuff's all pretty good. Um, I mm. think the only thing I'm not keen on is a few of the scenes with, uh, Chromia's face. Everything else, I was like, yeah, this is this is all right. It's not amazing. It's not as obviously as uh, like on the balls. They're crazy good, uh, mm. incredible that it was. But this is this is okay. This isn't bad. Things seem to flow. Uh, mm. quite well i wasn't confused at all looking at anything there wasn't a point where i was like how the hell does this go from this to this uh, everything uh, logically made sense while you read it which was nice because sometimes i think i've said at the very least that uh it's it's sometimes a little bit on the confusing side but mm. uh, especially with the action it all flowed nicely 
Mm. And um, uh, I think well. the two art styles complement each other in that it's hard for me to tell which is which. Yes, yeah, I, I'd um, agree with that. Uh, which is good. I will say the toy stuff was distracting at times, uh, more so than it has been in a while. Oh, really? Uh, I, I didn't um, notice it as, as much. Maybe I just got used to it, I suppose. A couple, the couple of scenes that stood out to me. When we see the fusion cannons and they have a teeny tiny go into a 5mm pork peg. Uh... Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah. And also, when Megatron is driving through the streets, and, be, you know, he doesn't have his fusion cannon, so it's very much, <laughs> I am a toy with no gun. I, yeah, you have it lost looks a awful. Piece. You have lost a piece, yeah. and now you will never be able to enjoy the full experience anymore. No, I would agree that Megatron's alt mode without the turret, like, it doesn't look like anything. It looks no. like a square. Well... Yes rectangle you know a, a yes. random shape it is a shape on legs yeah and not, not, not even not a treads. cool dynamic shape no. and yes you, you're quite right no treads it doesn't seem yeah. and it it's doesn't seem legs. to hot does it hover there's, there's does it hover feet. there's tiny uh. feet at the bottom it's just running <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> um but no i overall i think this is probably probably the best issue so far i tell you something i did like but we didn't really mm. get enough of it Mm-hmm. And that was the talking of, oh god, what was he? What was his name? You call the the bad guy uh, from the, the war? Yeah, like that. That that's mm-hmm. that could be an interesting concept because I didn't see it as a a three thing. I saw it as more of a collective consciousness, mm-hmm. almost mm-hmm. like a like it infects people, uh, mm-hmm. but Which it's one will. But is... I don't. From this, it's hard to tell. Yeah, which is slightly frustrating because we're 15 issues issues in and we've seen the name two or three times. Yeah. And, and it, like, there's mm. potential for it to be quite interesting. Well, I suppose he could mm. argue that for fucking anything, I guess. But the, the idea of if it is a collective consciousness that is taking over Cybertronian life forms, that that mm. could work quite well and quite nicely, I, th- I think. But we don't mm. know. And also there was an interesting thing with Skywarp. Like apparently was working for the XR Connect at the time, and he was leading a clone swarm. I'm curious about that. Yeah, is That's... has Skywarp had a role? Is this the first time he's popped into yeah. comics? This is the first time he warped in, and yep. the sound effect is warp with an O. D- yeah, I was gonna say W O R P. Which I will say, <laughs> not to you know, maybe it's just me missing. You know, you get used to a good thing, mm-hmm. but that is a bad bad use of a sound effect where they've got sort of a blown out word that's faded over Skywarp's feet. You can tell that was added post uh, that, on the computer. Yeah, that was added post post. Yeah. Like, that's, uh, listen, I don't know how long this guy's been doing it. Maybe it's just the coloring that makes it worse. But it, that feels like word art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I see shouldn't. what you're saying. No. Because this is a professionally produced book. <laughs> <laughs> it does look a bit um, on the wonky side. Uh, it also does kind of look like Skywarp is sitting in an invisible chair. Well, like a Professor X chair, but <laughs> yeah. with guns. <laughs> but with Gatling guns. <laughs> which raises the question, who gives Skywarp Gatling guns? Mm, that's a good question. Mm. Um... But yeah, I think this is probably the strongest issue so far. I'm very comfortable giving this an 8. I was actually thinking an 8 as well myself, to be honest. Mm. I'm um, quite happy with that. Yeah, I think it's a strong issue. I think it sets up things well. And I would love to see the book. It, I think this really shows what Brian's capable of. There was, there was only one groan moment I had. Mm. Do you think you know what the groan moment might be? I'm curious what the groan moment is. Uh, it was when... Um, I, the page isn't loading up now, tip, uh, typically. It was the, the part where uh, uh, Sentinel Prime... Uh, said there's de- they they're doing nothing but deception, mm. or so- something along those lines. And what's I just the line? what's the line? Uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm just scrolling, scrolling. Yeah, the page is it just is... not loaded. That 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 is not strength. That will that will not bring us peace or order. It is deception, all of it. Yeah, and it's the it's just the box that says it is deception, and I just kind of read it and went, oh, we had to put deception. In I the get it because they were they're going to be called Decepticons. Yeah. This is the problem with the Decepticons having a name and being associated with deception. That every time that word pops up, it's just like God fucking damn it! <laughs> Sentience, Mikey, beings, life, all all of it together. It's fine. 
All of them life forms who are sentient deserve freedom and mm. shit. Kill me. One might fall. One might stand. <laughs> I would God love if that's it. how it came across. There was what? Like, they really bad quotations. <laughs> one might fall. One might stand. Bumblebee, do you ever worry that we're being uh, almost automatic? Oh. <laughs> robotic. And it's like, it should be like automatic, robotic, but a little, you know. And it should be like, there's just this one panel of Optimus's face getting closer and closer and closer. Almost autobotic. Einheit gets shot in the butt, but it takes no damage. <laughs> wow, Einheit, you're really living up to your name. Thanks, Sudstreaker. <laughs> hey, shoot me in the ass again. <laughs> shoot me in the ass. We'll do it for parodies. <laughs> I still hate that scene. Yeah. <laughs> it was dumb. It... Ironhide, the Ironhide mini made no sense in the end. No, it wasn't great. <laughs> it started well. I this... always thought. I, I like the start because it was a te- weird mystery thing. But anyway, that's yeah. a different book. Um, We are going to leave it there and we're going to move on to Transformers Galaxies issue three, which is uh, almost completely flashback. If not completely yes. flashback. No, I think um, it is all flashback. Yeah, this is basically the story is about how the Constructicons went from we're building a city to we are not building a city, we are on a moon. But it's fine, I'm sure they'll write. Um, this is written by Tyler Blazinski, art by Livio Ramondelli, letters by the now absent Tom B. Long, oh. uh, praise him, uh, edited by David Mariotti and Tom Waltz. And it opens with, uh, the Constructagon combiner who doesn't have a name and is not devastating anything. Um, <laughs> building some stuff, building a tower and Wheeljack's like, this is amaze balls. And we see the Constructicons are very much individuals trying to control the thing, except they're basically sucked into the void. And a void that smiles as uh, they sort of get subsumed and something else takes control of the combiner and starts smishing stuff. And seems smishing. rather happy. Smishin. And seems uh. rather happy. Uh, people start running. Thur- Thurgamax manages to talk the combiner down and force it to disengage and the constructor comes like what it was like there was someone else there and they're basically realizing that every time they've combined it's like there's a seventh personality and this is the first time that that seventh personality has had any kind of control Mm. um wheeljack is really freaked out by this and it's like this is no no more of this thank you very much no um, but then Long Hall comes out and says, "Like it's not just that we combine because we can do a job; we have to now." The Enigma basically gives us a biological, instinctive drive to join together. Um, Thurgamax sort of thinks this is an interesting development because she has no vision. Um, Hook is begging for another chance. Wheeljack is really not up for it, but eventually, uh, they 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 get they get a bit of a leeway. Scrapper tells Thurgamax that every time they combine, it's getting stronger. Um, they're fighting it every time. And Thurgamax sort of says, why are you fighting it? This, there's a seventh personality there. Work with it. Fighting it is making it stronger. Give it some leeway. Um, no one's really comfortable with this, but they go for it. Uh, Wheeljack goes to the Senate and argues his case to them. Thurgamax is there as well, and she's basically, you know, she thinks it's great. The Constructicons are great. Everything's fine. Wheeljack thinks that this is the dumbest thing anyone's ever done, and they should never be allowed to even be in the same room together. Um, she in- Thurgamax insists that the Constructicons are sacrificing everything to become the greatest builders of their generation. Nominus Prime, making his uh, first appearance, I think. Hmm, I think so. Says, thank you for your help, but we did have, and Andy, you'll love this, an abomination. Uh, it was an abomination, Andy. Uh, abomination us. Yeah, <laughs> not an abomination you, or an abomination me. <laughs> That's the weirdest Bar- Barney song anyone ever wrote. Um, <laughs> you know, a combiner went nuts and killed a hell of a lot of people, and both Thurgamax and himself were there to see it. Um, not only that, but it drained a massive amount of energy from their planet. Um, now they're recovering from a war, and they've got another one of these things, and what if this one decides to do whatever the hell it wants as well? Um, so, Nominus says they can repair 
any damage they've caused, finish what they were doing in Iacon, and then dot 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 we'll find some other way for them to contribute. Dot dot dot. Uh, days later, the Constructicons are finished. They feel they finally mastered the Combiner. Um, Iacon is complete. It's shiny. It's bright. It's wonderful. Thurgamax thanks them. Nominus thanks them. He heartily tank thanks them. Oh, so much thanking. Scrapper uh, tells Thurgamax that, you know, letting the other consciousness into the, 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 the hole allowed him to unlock the true power. Um, Hook is like, something is not right about it. Because I Scrapper seems to still think that they're in control. Mm. And I think Hook is starting to realize that what if, it, you know, when we're together, they're in control. Mm. Um, Nominus says, as a tribute to the heroic efforts, we're giving you a badge. You rebuilt an entire city. Have a badge. Yeah. <laughs> and also, we'd like you to go to this place where no one else lives. Um, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's a good bit where it's like they get a badge but then it's like everyone gets a badge the guy who moved the digger over there gets a badge the guy who made the concrete gets a badge which basically is saying like none of you matter and when you think about it they probably matter more than anyone else who did anything in this city mm -hmm. anyway uh, the constructor cons are there waiting endlessly waiting for their next assignment. Scrapper wants to rebuild a new city or start a new city. Uh, but Nominus says, no, 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 no. What we want you to do is go to a world that's very far away. And you're go they're going to do energy on harvesting. And you're going to be the four men. Yay. And now you can leave. Bye-bye. Uh, Bergamax sort of says goodbye. Uh, confesses that... She now realizes that we all have the ability to go beyond our expectations. And as the constructor cons go like, oh my god, this is the best thing ever. We're going, we're trusted with this amazing mission. They leave their home world behind, not knowing what the future is about to bring them. Which is isolation and insecticons. Hooray! Yay! Um, what do you think? Uh, surprisingly, another fairly interesting issue. I will say, like, the Galaxy Galaxies has been a reasonably strong book so far. Surprisingly so. Because I mm. didn't think I'd enjoy it. And I am. No, no I wouldn't. Again, I wouldn't say it's amazing. It's no, not like blowing no. my socks off each time, but I'm, uh, each time I'm reading it, and I'm going, yeah, this was all right. Yeah, it was. It wasn't a terrible read. It was fairly in in enjoyable, fairly engaging. The art mm. again, the artwork's never for me, but you know, neither here nor there. The the story's keeping me hooked at the very least, which is nice. Mm. Um, I I you know we we've, we've said it before, but. In the in not just the combiners, but in any subgroup, it's usually the leader and what other guy who gets any real focus. Yeah. So and that is still true for this book. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's uh, Scrapper and Hook and then everybody else and friends. Um, but we do get a bit more out of the Constructicons individually, and we do. They feel more like individuals than they a have bit. in a while. Yeah. Um, now, part of that is, of course, because the the writer is a big cartoon nerd, and he's gone with the cartoon voices, and I've made my opinion on that known before. Um, but I think putting putting you know some elements like that that would throw me off aside, he clearly has an idea what each of these individual individuals sound like, mm -hmm. and I can't think of any book that's had that. No. You mean, I assume you mean specifically for the Constructicons, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Because, I, I mean, previous IDW, Dreamwave, they've all kind of just sounded the same. Like, I, ID, previously IDW made a plot point of it, but it was still like, these are basically the six, the same guy six times. It's it. I think it might be because uh, most of the time when you, when they've been used as Constructicons, it's just a, a way to get to Devastator. And it's like that that's the, the goal that you the, the quickly rushing towards and devastate is the thing that matters most about them. I could be wrong, but that that's how I would presume is the idea mm. behind it, because oh devastate is the big robot, he blows up every, everything. That's that's what people want to see. And instead of like, oh well it, why are the constructicons the way they, they are? Why do mm. they form Devastator? What is Devastator as a as a individual? Do you know what the do you know what the, the, the dark personality is though, Mikey? Mm. Um, that is. Do, do you know? Hmm? No. It's a scooping presence. Is it, is it a devastating force? <laughs> a religious 
scooping <laughs> presence. <laughs> Scoop. <laughs> Constructor cons are no more. Nope. There is only surprise, Scoop. motherfucker. <laughs> we weren't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard the word One of the scoop Lord? One scoop or two. <laughs> that's, what, that's, that's what his phrase will be every time he kills someone. Oh, yes! <laughs> you know what? I, I would have been way more okay or two. with replacing Prowl with Scoop if that had been a thing. <laughs> <laughs> he just you missed out, guys. I'm just saying. puns. <laughs> <laughs> Knocks over an animal transformer. Always scoop after your pets. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. That, I, that I, I assume that's I kind of what we're working up to, though. Because he, mm. yeah. But what I'm kind of worried is that well, the thing mm. will be, and he's an individual. But what we get is Devastator Smash. I would like some communicate, like as the constructor con would just like finally they combine it. Just like I'm in the driver's seat now. <laughs> there's some we see a bit of his personality a bit more and like something that brings in elements of the other constructor cons would be really nice because usually that's not included do you not think we'll get a scene uh similar to that which you always wanted from common rider wizard where um he went into the dragon form and he had to talk mm. to the dragon do you not think that oh. might be a thing that could be neat. Also, you reminded me of that. Now I'm angry again. Yeah, because <laughs> that's how I see it. I think they they might all allow themselves to be absorbed, and maybe mm. th there's a way that they all seven of them, I guess, work together. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like, I'd really love if like this is just like a a pet, a pet want, but I'd love if we had a something really delving into what this whole combiner thing does to you psychologically yeah because rarely does anyone really try and like the times we have had is like till all or one where it's not really the combiner thing we're delving into it's what happens when you combine and one of you is dead i think it also <laughs> shows that whenever they do the combiner thing it's always the decepticon ones that are more interesting because there's the mm. psychologically messed up element to it where the autobots they just they just work yeah and they're it's usually boring fine. yeah don't worry and, like, everything's okay <laughs> oh my god, what is their great flaw? Computron doesn't feel well. Uh, first day is a wuss. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Superion is cocky. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. I'm trying to. Are there any really. Because, like, you've got Predaking. He's interesting because the whole idea of, like, um, every other combiner, their mind's broken because of the, the disparate elements, but the. The para the Seacons and the Predacons are so similar that their mm. their combiners are like completely whole functional individuals. Yeah. Like that's something I really love. Um the Devastator Devastator is interesting. Bruticus is kind of funny in an interesting way. because <laughs> um, it's just like, oh my god, look at this military tactician. I have hand. <laughs> I love hand. You love lamp. Where's... Lamp. <laughs> lamp. Lamp. <laughs> but um, I'm trying. I'm genuinely trying to think. Is there an interesting Autobot combiner in terms of personality? Mm. I can't think of one. No, me neither. To be honest. If anyone can, let us know. Seriously. Yeah. Because I'm I'm just going through various combiners in my head, and every time I stop at one, I actually think is interesting. It's like, oh no, wait, that's the Decepticon. Fort Max doesn't count. No, he's unless I'll no 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 it doesn't <laughs> because like I Fort Max only matters when it's a guy with a sword go going head on. Yep. Um, and uh, like, yeah. Um, or when he's murdering people with his boobs. Wow, that is a thing that happens. Wow, uh, <laughs> it did happen. <laughs> you can't say it didn't. I believe you. He took a man's head off with his boobs. <laughs> um, yeah. but yeah, I would say there's not a lot to actually say on this issue because it's just good, solid, competent background story. Yeah, I'd say that. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I'm also glad we didn't have flashbacks to the future in this because I think it would have taken away from the momentum. Mm. Um, I think this story really needed this space to breed, and I think it shows that that's a strong thing when, that this is the best issue of the of the arc so far. Yeah, yeah, it was good that it got the focus it needed, rather mm. than like you say breaking it up and going back and forth. Um, I won't ask about the arc because you know our opinions are like it's Livio. Yep. You, you you like Livio, you don't like Livio, it's it's Livio. Yep. Um and I don't think this book brings anything new to the table in terms of that. 
No, it, it's Livio style. That's it. Mm. Um, so I will ask you for a rating. Um, again, I think I'm happy enough to give this an eight. Uh, it's enjoyable. I will say that maybe like from a from a if you were talking to these guys, if you wanted to do experiments with them, maybe do it out in the middle of nowhere where they can't, you know, kill anyone. Do it with a security <laughs> seat. I don't, it's weird because Termagax and Wheeljack are again on the real hard ends of each argument point. There's no like middle person going, well, we could do the experiments, but how, how about we keep them controlled and away and safe hmm. instead of just let's shunt them off to another planet? That's, I mean, <laughs> that, that works, but yeah. No, eight. Sure hope they don't ever come back. Yeah, they'll never get slightly pissed off at us or anything like that. <laughs> Resentment or anything. No. It's fine. It's fine. Oh. Yeah. What What about you, Mikey? Um. Yeah, an eight. I think an eight is a good rating for this one. I think it's very well written. I think the characters are interesting. Um. I liked Nominus, which I wasn't expecting. Um. And I think having the constructor comes developed the way they have. This all really informs the previous books very well. Mm, yeah, I'd say so. Um, yeah, like, we can really see how they went from, you know, six people who saw themselves as kind of the foundation of a whole new world to six people who would just desperately like to be anywhere but where they are. Yeah, yeah, because they haven't been appreciated for what they've done, which is mm. interesting, because like you said, they built Iacon, and then they were yeah. basically told, ah, who gives a shit about you? It's like, come on. What? Fook off. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, yep. Um, but yeah, uh, that is it, guys. That is Galaxies. That is the end of the show. I would as always like to thank you all for listening. If you want to hear what's coming up next, which is our review of Ghostbusters, Transformers Ghostbusters, uh, you can support us over on Patreon for $2. Uh, it will get you this. It will get you extended... Uh, it will it will, it will get you with the extended comic show. It will get you interviews and other such things a week early, and it will get you the moon base woo woo where we talk about things non Transformers related. The most recent one was Common Rider Geo. I'm sure we're going to have an interesting one in January at some point because I know you had one planned that never got off the ground last month. Uh, that was a Christmas specific one. Yeah. Oh, you can still do it. Christmas movies in January. Andy, there's Chris. There, there. It's January and people doing horror movies. Yeah, because they were the ones no one wanted from last year. That's why it's Apparently... fuck you, it's January month. <laughs> Apparently Underwater's good, but... Yeah, it's one that they had no faith in, though. That's yeah, why they got no. shunted here. So many... Oh. So... That's why <laughs> Bad Boys uh, Forever is here as well, which is apparently okay as well, but I'm not sure I believe that. Uh, no, I don't believe that for a second. No. Um... But anyway, uh, if you want to give us some feedback, our email address is moonbase2 at gmail.com. We also take stuff on Twitter, Facebook, Libs, and Patreon, Weebly, everywhere, really. Um, and yeah, if you want to contact me personally, you can do it at the Irish Paleo on Twitter. Andy. Yeah. Say hi. Uh, ccbunker.weebly.com, uh, cctfw on uh, Twitter, uh, YouTube cover commander, TFW podcast is Moonbase 2 Transformers podcast for YouTube as well. No. Mikey, you kind of mentioned the rest, so we're good. Right, guys, thank you for listening. And if you uh, want to stick around, we will talk Transformers, Ghostbusters. I ain't afraid of no ghost. Yeah, yeah. You are now leaving Moonbase 